Hey everyone, I'm Zach Armstrong, and today I'll be showing you how to make massive lightning bolts right at your own house with nothing more than a few simple things that you can get online or in stores. The machine we'll be building today is known as a Tesla coil, which is basically a two coil machine that operates off the principles of electromagnetic induction and electrical resonance. As a quick demonstration of inductance, I've set up these two coils very close together, but not touching. And whenever we apply a quick high current pulse from this LED driver right here to the small coil, you can see on the voltmeter back there that there's a quick voltage spike across the larger coil. This is actually very similar to how a Tesla coil works, except a Tesla coil also utilizes electrical resonance to boost the voltage to an incredibly high value. A good analogy for electrical resonance is actually breaking a glass with sound waves. Think of the glass as the large coil and the sound waves as the fuel produced by the small coil. If you tap a glass, it produces a sound at a certain frequency. If you take this frequency and match it, you can cause the glass to vibrate using nothing but sound. And if you amplify the frequency enough, then the glass will actually shatter into a million pieces. The same thing goes for the two coils. If I apply a certain frequency to the small coil and it matches the natural resonant frequency of the larger coil, then an oscillating voltage will be produced in the larger coil that will continue to oscillate back and forth until it reaches a voltage so high that it erupts out the top as a massive display of electrical power. With that in mind, let's get started designing our circuit. The type of Tesla coil we'll be building today is known as a spark gap Tesla coil. And for that, we'll need a few things. First, a high voltage power supply. This should either be low frequency AC or direct current, but not high frequency AC, as this will not work in our application. Second, we'll also need some high voltage capacitors, some coated magnet wire, ordinary wire, pipe, tubing, and some other miscellaneous parts. To start, you're going to want something to power your Tesla coil off of, and for that, an ordinary 60 Hz transformer is usually used, although basically anything over 4000 volts will work. The optimal voltage range is between 6000 volts and 20,000 volts. Anything higher than that is usually not worth it, and anything lower than that will have trouble firing the spark gap. If you have a choice between higher voltage or higher current, it's actually better to go with higher current, since it optimizes the power use and consumption. For my coil, I use three 2000 volt microwave oven transformers with the outputs in series to get 6000 volts. Some of your other options include bug zappers, arc lighters, power line transformers, neon sign transformers, rectified flyback transformers, or oil burning ignition transformers. Please note that some of these power supplies, such as arc lighters or flyback transformers, operate off of their own drive circuitry and don't really need to be plugged into 120 volts, as this will usually break them. Capacitors are a crucial part of every spark gap Tesla coil, since they're what actually stores the energy to create the high current pulses and they help create the tuned circuit with the primary coil. Capacitors are made by separating two conductors with a thin layer of non-conductive material, called dielectric, usually some kind of plastic or glass-like material. Whenever you're looking at capacitors, there are two main values you need to look for, the voltage and the capacitance. The voltage of your capacitor or capacitor bank should be roughly three times the transformer's output to accommodate for high voltage spikes and peaks without blowing up. The capacitance, which is measured in farads, should be anywhere between 1 to 150 nanofarads, which is a very small amount whenever you actually think about it. The maximum usable capacitance for a given power supply can be found using this simple equation. The closer to this maximum value you get, the better your core will likely perform. Lower capacitance values usually yield weaker, more purple sparks, while higher values give brighter, longer sparks. Since it is often quite difficult to find a single very large capacitor to use in a Tesla coil, many people opt for the safer option and go with a bank of several smaller capacitors, usually called an MMC bank. When it comes to choosing capacitors to use in an MMC bank, there are some good types, some bad types, and even some DIY types. Making your own capacitor is not actually that uncommon in the world of Tesla coil building, and in fact, it can get you some pretty decent results. Many people, however, would rather buy their capacitors online and avoid the hassle of building their own. 
For those people, there are a couple kind of capacitors that you need to look for and some that you need to look out for. Plastic film or pulse capacitors are by far the best option, especially those with polypropylene dielectrics. On the other hand, capacitors like these are by far your worst option in the Tesla coil circuit because they have a nasty tendency to, well... blow up. Let's just say they can't handle the high frequency operations of a Tesla coil. Here's a more extensive list of what kind of capacitors should not be used in a Tesla coil circuit. For your own safety and the well-being of your Tesla coil, please avoid using these in your primary circuit. Capacitors are most often the first thing to give out on a Tesla coil, so do yourself a favor and pick up some that will last you a good long time. The spark gap can be thought of as a super fast on and off switch that automatically discharges the primary capacitor through the primary coil as soon as it's reached full charge. The world of spark gaps can be divided up into two main categories, static and rotary. Static spark gaps are by far the easiest to build, since all you have to do is place two pieces of metal close enough together to allow the transformer to arc across them. This kind of spark gap is good for small coils, but it has its downsides when it comes to larger coils. First, the brakes per second is generally lower, and not very consistent or smooth. For those who don't know, brakes per second is simply the term for how many pulses the capacitor creates across the spark gap each second. Second, static gaps tend to have fairly poor quenching, which simply means that our so-called on-off switch has trouble turning back off after each pulse. To fix this, air can be blown or sucked across the gap. As seen in this demonstration, airflow can make a tremendous difference in a static gap's performance and the overall coil performance. Rotary spark gaps are free from the efficiencies found in a typical static spark gap. They come in two main types, propeller and disc, and allow users to utilize whatever brakes per second rate they desire, which really helps them sculpt the output of their Tesla coil. Coil builders hoping for bright, frantic discharges should opt for a higher brakes per second rotary spark gap, while those in search of slower, more branching arcs may consider a lower brakes per second rate in their rotary gap. It is now finally time to put those two coils we've talked so much about into our circuit. The larger coil, formerly called the secondary coil, is made by wrapping magnet wire around a cylindrical form, such as a PVC pipe. This will probably take a while if you're doing it manually. A good secondary coil should be around 4-7 to seven times taller than it is wide, with the best results coming from smaller, fatter coils. The top of the secondary coil is usually connected to a metallic toroider sphere, which has the effect of lowering the resonant frequency and allowing the voltage to climb to a higher value before breaking out. These so-called top loads are typically homemade, using materials like old metal bowls, aluminum tape, or aluminum dryer ducting. The smaller coil, called the primary, should be made of thicker wire or copper tubing, and is usually either flat or helical in shape. For the Tesla coil to operate, the primary coil must work in conjunction with the capacitor bank to produce an oscillating current that matches the natural resonant frequency of the secondary coil. To ensure the two coils work together well, it is a good idea to open up a Tesla coil design program. I personally recommend Java TC, which you can find a link to below. After you've inputted your coil specifications into the program and clicked run, there are three main values you need to look at. The primary resonant frequency, the secondary resonant frequency, and the coupling coefficient. The first two values should be fairly similar, while the last value should be less than 0.2. The coupling coefficient of greater than 0.2 means the two coils are too close together, and may arc over to one another. Fiddle around with these values until you get them the way you like. Then move on to the build phase of your Tesla coil.
All right, everyone, that's basically it. You now know how to make your own giant Tesla coil. This video has been the result of five long years of trial, error, and test coil experience. And my hope for it was to give out the information that I wish I had had whenever I was making my first Tesla coil. So let me know if I've accomplished that down in the comments below. Again, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment.